So right now I'm going to show you how to change a product time and temperature and possibly the name. To get into programming, you just simply press and hold the P button for programming. Hold it in for about three seconds, enter the code 123, and that takes us into product programming here. What I want to do is find my LT2 product so I can alter the cook time on this. So what I'm going to do is use this up arrow, and I'm going to cycle through my steps until I find LT2. There's LT1, here's LT2, and that's the one I'm going to modify, so I press the program button. And this is first telling me I can change the name. And if I press this check mark button, it's going to start flashing the name, and I would just use the product but or the number buttons or product buttons down at the bottom. And you're going to notice they have letters underneath them. It kind of works like an old touch tone phone where you had the letters. I'll just cycle the first one here. I'm going to leave it at L, but you can see I can go J, K, L if I continue to press button four. And then if I wanted to go to the next letter, I use the right arrow here or left arrow. I can go back. And if I want to put in a space, I can do that. You have the button zero, it gives us an asterisk, a space underscore, which gives us a blank space, or a plus sign. So we're going to put that back to the underscore. And I'm not going to change that now, but that's how you would do it if you needed to. Okay. So the next step is assign button. And by assigning a button, this makes sure that our product here is going to be uh, somewhere down here where we can activate that product. Right now we know it's a sign because the LED is lit above button zero. When the LED is on that means it's assigned already so we don't have to change anything. Cook time is three minutes and 30 seconds here. If I wanted to change that, let's say our cook time we wanted it to be three minutes, I would just simply press three zero zero, press my program button, Temperature, we're going to leave the same at 350, but if I wanted to change it, I could use the buttons down here to change that. Cook ID, this is what flashes while we're cooking the product. It'll flash the time and then this little abbreviation. We're going to leave that the same, but you would change this the same way we changed the product name. Alarm 1, this is our shake timer. So our total cook time is 3 minutes. We're going to add a shake timer so it tells us to shake the uh, basket after 30 seconds. So I'd want that to happen at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm just going to save that. Now we're going to have a shake timer at 30 seconds. Alarm 2, if we wanted to add another one, I could enter it here. We're going to keep that at 0. Quality timer, we'll keep at 0. Filter after. This is the number of times, number of drops before the fryer is going to request a quick filter. The messier the product, the more crumbs and breading that falls off, usually the more often you want to filter. This one we're going to leave at 15. Load compensation. This is a fryer sensitivity. So with fryer sensitivity, our average, or right in the middle of sensitivity on the Evolution Elite Henny Penny is 10. We run on a scale of 0 to 20. 20 is the most sensitive and 0 has no sensitivity. Other fryer manufacturers might use a different scale there where 5 is the average, but 10 is the average on the Henny Penny. Load comp reference, we're going to keep the same at 350. That's usually one we don't alter. Same with the next couple steps here. Full heat, 20 seconds. PC factor, 5 degrees. And then we're back to select products, so we're all set. Now once you're done, all you have to do is press and hold the program button and we'll exit out of there. And now you're back to regular and we're ready to cook. So I could find my product here, LT2, and start it. And you're going to see our total cook time is three minutes.